everyone and welcome to Science Lab. The signs are happening because Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Every day we are looking at some of the great signs that are happening around us. In this episode, we are going to look at some of the technological advancements in this last days. Coronavirus reveals new age of internet censorship. You may be surprised who is writing the new rules for online speech. Try to send the wrong type of videos to your friends and you may bump up against the new internet sensors. For years, YouTube, Facebook and other sites have downplayed content they disapprove of, that old news. But now the censorship is becoming more aggressive. YouTube has spent the coronavirus period playing back more. It's maxed down videos that present any kind of dissenting views on the crisis. Only to see the same video reposted again and again, some of these videos are by obvious quacks, but many are not. Some are even by mainstream experts, but if they question the lockdown or suggest fighting coronavirus by boosting your immune system and eating more vitamin C, down they come. Other platforms are joining in. Simply smacking down videos and public posts hasn't worked. People have still spread the forbidden information via private messaging apps until now. Try sharpening one of these problematic videos privately with a few friends on WhatsApp and you will find yourself blocked. The Facebook-owned service limits how widely you can share these videos. In some cases, it only will allow you to pass the video onto one person at a time or bid to stop it going viral. One such video is from Sky News Australia of an interview with Swedish chief epidemiologist Johan Geske. It's a mainstream news source interviewing a mainstream expert. Yet WhatsApp will block you from passing it on to more than one person. When an algorithm such as this ends with flapping a mainstream media clip featuring a dissenting yet extremely credible voice, just because it says something critical about Western responses to the virus. It's very clear we may have gone way too far the other way in our battle against fake news. Weren't Isabella Kaminska, editor of the Financial Times, a Phil blog. The Financial Times is from far beyond some libertarian anarchist site. Yet even the center-left publication is concerned about the direction we are heading. Kaminska continued, what matters is that criticism by a leading scientist in his field, who still holds sway at the decisions making in a country demand a close friend and ally, and not to rock state by any stretch, should somehow be thrown into the same net as the catches. David I. Conspiracy theories about 5C. You can dislike this view, but you shouldn't suppress them. Dissent is essential in a democracy as its criticism of national policy by respected peers. What are we supposed to do? Pretend Sweden suddenly doesn't exist. Kaminska coined the term censure tech to describe what is happening. Censure tech, as we would like to coin it, is the skillful art of deploying algorithms to suppress fake news, she wrote. Could it be we are at the stage that this tech is becoming the modern tech equivalent of book burning? Many of the senior leaders of Big Tech are ideologically committed to it. YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki admitted on May 7th, New York Times rabbit hole podcast that her strategy of prompting mainstream sources and downplaying others wasn't working. They push the mainstream videos, but people don't watch them. The YouTube's engineer told her, according to the podcast, but she didn't care. And so the leaders have responded to coronavirus with more censorship. Search for information about coronavirus on Google and you are taken to a special part of the site that links only to the mainstream sources. Encourage people to protest lockdown orders on Twitter and you will see your account suspended. Kevin Rose, who hosts the Rabbit Hole podcast, said that YouTube's response is actually like a fundamental shift in the YouTube universe. It should to be the site where anyone could have a voice, but now on certain subjects, only mainstream authorities are allowed. 
we could see a case for restricting manifestly dangerous information such as drink bleach to cure coronavirus. We can understand YouTube ill at not wanting to promote videos that say something like coronavirus is conspiracy caused by Jews. But what is happening here goes far beyond that. European government wants censorship to go further. On May 14, 2020, France adopted a new law against online hate speech. If content is ranked as hate speech, Google, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook must remove it within 24 hours. Terrorist propaganda or child pornography must come down within one hour. Failure to do so can result in fine of 1.25 million euro. And if a regulator broad decides the company is not meeting the requirements, it could fine them up to 4% of the annual global revenue. For Google, that figure would be $6.5 billion. And the police can force internet service providers to block a non-compliant site everywhere in France. Digital Affairs Junior Minister Cedric O. said, We can no longer reply on the platform's goodwill. This is the first break of this new platform regulations paradigm. The lawmakers anything that is illegal offline, illegal online. A lot of this news is laudable, especially the part about child pornography. The trouble is hate speech and terrorist propaganda are pretty flexible terms and the government gets to make the decisions. La Quadratrio, a digital rights non-profit, warned that in French law, the definition of terrorism is broad enough that it could be used to shut down protesters. European courts have previously counted even academic crisis of Islam as hate speech. Germany decided that burning flag was hate speech, so burning an EU flag in protest of the EU is now illegal. One of La Quadratio's spokesperson told CNN that this could give the government a new tool to abuse their power and censor the internet for political ends. He said, one of the dangers of this law is that it could turn against journalists, activists and researchers whom it claims to defend. No one knows exactly what content should be considered manifestly illegal online. The law could soon allow politicians to dictate what you can and what you can't say online. The worry is that internet platforms will err on the side of deleting. Why risk a fine over a tweet? Social media sites could soon block or delete content that comes anywhere remotely close to being problematic. Forbes write, this new liability for illegal speech in France will get some nasty material off the internet. But at the same price of removing some content, perhaps a lot of content that on a close call might be perfectly legitimate speech. European lawmakers seem increasingly comfortable with trade-offs as they move their internet policy toward greater content regulation. We have seen many technological advancements happening around us, but there is more. Don't go anywhere, we'll meet you after a short break. To science lab the signs are happening because lord jesus christ is coming before the break we saw about some of the technological advancements that is happening around us and let's continue exploring even more germany had exactly this experience when it introduced a similar law in 2018 its own justice minister heiko maas found that the tweets deleted after they have flagged as hate speech the eu is currently working on a directive that would force the whole block to adopt a similar standard. 
too bad for France and Germany. You may be thinking, but this affects you too. Even if you live in the United States, website you use regularly already follow EU law. Columbia Law School professor Anu Bradford wrote, More often than not, it is the European Union that sets the rules by which multinational tech companies operate. In 2018, for example, the EU implemented the General Debt Protection Regulation, which regulates how Internet firms use your personal data. Facebook, Microsoft and Google have all applied this policy globally. Similarly, EU rules influence the types of speech that Internet companies will allow on their platforms. Instead of being guided by America's first amended free speech protections, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube follow the EU definitions of hate speech worldwide when deciding which content to remove from the platforms. Many of these companies have already signed up to a voluntary EU code on hate speech under threat of some tougher regulations if they did not. These regulations have been incorporated to the firm's official terms of service even in the United States. When YouTube takes a video down because it violates its standards, which is not telling you, which is not telling you is that those standards include rules forced upon it by the EU. In 2019, the European Court of Justice ruled that a judge in an EU country can order content to take off social media worldwide. An American can write a Facebook post aimed at Americans in America, but the ECJ awarded European courts the power to order it take down. The ECJ noted that the policy speech worldwide was a drastic step. Thus, Courts must adopt an approach of self-limitations. In other words, there is no check of these courts' powers. No one can restrain them. On April 2020, these American tech companies are now reluctant to censor. The EU is not behind the coronavirus censorship. In fact, social media is being pushed to do more. When New York Times Kelvin Rose interviewed Wojcicki, he praised YouTube censoring information. He praised YouTube censoring of information. Even if the EU did nothing, a lot of this censorship would still be going on. The big tech CEOs overwhelming support Democrats. It still matters that the EU writes the rules. It has drawn up the borders of acceptable speech and the European judges patrol them. They are already pushing Facebook and Google toward more censorship than the tech giants would have otherwise implemented. In her book The Brussels Effect, Bradford argues that the EU remains an influential superpower that shapes the world in its image. Today, few Americans are aware of the EU regulations determined the default privacy settings of their iPhones or the type of speech that Twitter will tell it as unacceptable. And who is the undisputed leader of Europe, as well as the first economic country to adopt online hate speech laws? Germany. Behind the EU's global regulations, Germany is controlling what goes online. Germany's ambition for the internet should concern everyone, even those who doesn't have a computer. The EU's behavior on this issue exposes the dictatorial nature of the German-dominated entity. Really, we are witnessing the manifestation of the spirit of the Holy Roman Empire in the tech world. The biblically prophesied seventh and the final resurrection of this empire wants to control the internet. are happening very fast around us as we least expect it. We think that it is just a technological development but these are the forerunners of the mark of the beast. We would have never thought that the mark of the beast would arrive in our lifetime. But like it or not, the fact is it's right in the corner. Bible says that in the last days the Antichrist will come to this world and introduce a universal mark of the beast. He causes all both small and great 
rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is triple six. What is mentioned in the Bible that are going to take place in the end times are taking place in our lifetime. All they show us that indeed we are living in the last days. Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again very soon. And before we end the show, we would like to ask you a question from this episode. Which social media platform are you actively using? Option A, WhatsApp. Option B, Facebook. And option C, Twitter. Send us your answers to our email ID sciencelab at angeltv.org. If you have missed any of the episodes, don't worry, you can watch it again in our Science Lab YouTube page. But don't forget to like, share and comment on the video. And also ask your friends and relatives to watch the Science Lab so that they will know that we are living in the last days. Remember, signs are happening because Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Maranatha. Maranatha.